Hello, I'm Catherine Murphy, the moderator for the League of Women Voters candidate interview. I'm joined by Kathy Day, who is running for Ellensburg School District Board, position two. The ground rules for this event were shared earlier with Kathy and are posted in the description below. The interview consists of an opening statement followed by three questions and a closing statement. All candidates running for this position were invited to be interviewed. So Kathy, let's get started. You have 60 seconds for your opening remarks. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, well, I have been in public education for 30 years. I've been a teacher for 30 years. And I am so excited for this opportunity because I believe that it is our civic duty um, as a, a citizen in a democracy to, um, to promote that. Uh, it's our responsibility to our community to take care of one another. And because our young people, our children, are our most precious resource, um, I feel compelled to take this opportunity and uh, to invest in the Ellensburg School District and in the community of Ellensburg um, by running for this office and doing the best I can um, to make sure that every child is seen for who they are um, and given every opportunity to become who it is that they want to be. Thank you. Thank you. So here's the first question. Boomer retirement was predicted to occur in the early 2020s and COVID accelerated teacher and staff turnover. How can the district attract and retain good teachers, paraprofessionals, and other classified staff? And you have 90 seconds. Okay. So Ellensburg uh, didn't have to do much recruiting. Ellensburg uh, historically was sort of what we referred to as a destination district. And so I'm going to start with talking about how we retain good people once we get them. And I'll, I can come back around at the end and talk about the recruitment. But I believe that people need to feel valued and they need to be empowered and they should be compensated fairly. And so if a person is going to feel valued in their position, um, they need voice, they need to know that they matter. And I think that they collaboration has to take place so everyone feels like they're an important part of that system. We've got classified, we've got certificated, we've got paraprofessionals, we've got you know administration. Everybody needs to feel valued and have a voice. And then everyone needs to be empowered to do their job the best they can. And we need to do that by, by providing training that is relevant to their position, um, that is uh, helping them move forward and serve not just the mission and vision of the district overall, but also um, their daily task that they are being asked to do, everything that they're then asked to do as training needs to be something that they see as relevant and moving them forward. So if I'm a teacher, everything I should be asked to do as training should make me a better teacher and it should improve student learning and then I'll feel empowered. Um, fair, comp fair compensation, Always something that's important, probably a given. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is, what are your top three school board priorities for the school board if you win the election? And you have 90 seconds. Well, my, my top three would be transparency, building relationships, and inviting conversations. Because I believe that um, as a bridge between the school district and the community, uh, the school board needs to not simply uh, allow people to come and share, but to invite people uh, to come and share. And so um, I think that sometimes when we have barriers in place, um, we, don't, we don't make the best bridge between the district and the community as a board if there's not equity for people feeling like they can come and share. So um, to give a specific example, if I were a parent and maybe English was my second language, there are many barriers in place for me to go to a 
public school board meeting and be able to share what it is that I want to share. I've got to step up to a microphone, got to speak in front of people in what feels like a formal setting. And so I would want to remove some of those barriers to actually invite those conversations. I also think that we might be able to do a better job of going out into the community to gather information, to really listen and understand what it is that our community wants for our students. Building those relationships by um, inviting businesses in, talking to businesses, making sure that all of those connections that we're supposed to make as a bridge um, are made as a school board. Um, and then fund also most importantly, making sure that our budget is understandable by people in the community. And that's where I'd like to see more transparency. Thank you. Thank you. And the last question is in case of budget cuts, what would be your criteria when it comes to retaining programs and staff positions? And you have 90 seconds. Well, my first criteria would obviously be um, student achievement, student academics. And I think that this is, this is probably the most difficult thing that school board members have to do if you're ever faced with, with cutting, because it's not like we have you know, an extravagant budget to start with. But I think looking at our board ends is where we'd have to start prioritizing. So. Uh, students being academically prepared, um, students making connections and feeling connected, and then students being able to function as global citizens. Those are the three primary board ends that our policies are supposed to be um, fulfilling for our students. So we'd have to look at, you know, what, what budget items are closest to those three board ends, um, and then you wouldn't cut the ones closest to the center, the farther away you got from what we're achieving through those board ends, then I think that distance would be where you could start prioritizing and look at what you would cut. Um, I think that when we're talking about student learning and promoting student academics, that uh, that would be the very last thing that we would wanna look at. So maybe more indirect um, cuts, on the outside, but the board ends is where I would start to prioritize. Thank you. Thank you. And now it's time for your closing statement and you have 60 seconds for that. All right, well, as I said earlier, I feel like uh, I'm prepared for this uh, because of my 30 years experience as an educator. I have proven leadership through my years as a teacher. I've been the leader of the teachers, uh, local teachers union. I've been a chief negotiator. I'm a national board certified teacher and I've been a board facilitator and a trainer of teachers. I'm a founding member and president of a local nonprofit that supports families in Kittitas County that have cancer. So I have multiple layers of leadership experience um, that I have been involved in. Um, I also, uh, I'm, I'm not just excited, I'm passionate and compelled about getting out as I said before, making that bridge between the district and the community, building those relationships, inviting people in and really moving our district in the direction that we want. So every kid is seen uh, for who they are and given every opportunity to become who they wanna be. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy Day, for participating in this interview and for offering to serve our community as Ellensburg School District Board position two. For those watching, remember to check votewa.gov to be sure you are registered to vote. All interviews will be linked in the Kittitas County League's voter guide, which can be found at kittitasleague.org. Thank you for voting in this election. <laughs>